Days after Drew Holiday was dealt to Rip City, Joe Cronin's now moved into New England and got a hell of a lot in return. Brad Stevens is giving up Time Lord Robert Williams in three first-round picks while also throwing in 2023 Sixth Man of the Year, Malcolm Brogdon. It is October, so I guess it's only right the Boston Celtics swung for the fences in order to acquire Drew Holiday, but did they give up too much? Stay tuned. Just 17% of you watching right now are subscribed though, so what are 83% of you doing if you haven't already? Splash that subscribe button and turn on notifications, splash thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and follow your boy on Instagram and Twitter at dflowhoops. After it became official that Boston was trading for a five-time All-NBA defender, NBA scriptwriter Kevin O'Connor of The Ringer said it best. The Bucks became the East favorites over the Celtics by acquiring Dame, but Boston takes back that lead with the Drew Holiday acquisition. Coincidentally, the game of chess between Milwaukee and Boston continued even after this move, as the Bucks just picked up free agent guard Cam Payne, who should be a solid backup for Dame. Payne was traded from Phoenix to San Antonio for a protected second round pick and then waived by the Spurs. Good pickup for the Bucks. Regarding the Holiday move though, and many are going to say Boston gave up too much. However, after the Dame trade to Milwaukee, it reached a point for Brad Stevens and the Celtic front office that a gutsy decision was required for them to regain their status as top contender. We'll get to how good this trade makes Boston, but for the Blazers, over a matter of weeks, they've acquired the future of several positions, with Rob, Will, and Ayton coming over from Boston and Phoenix. This provides them with a traditional front court for the future, as both young bigs are under contract until 2026 with a two-time 20-plus point-per-game 29-year-old combo forward now leading the charge in Jeremy Grant, along with 2023's third overall pick Scoot Henderson, in addition to developing sophomore Shaden Sharp. And you can argue that Portland has a bright future. Who knows, they could even surprise some people in 23-24 and be a play-in team. But for Boston, it's not like they just traded for any other player. With Drew Holiday, their backcourt of Drew and Derek White, now features the point guard for 2023's first and second All-NBA defensive teams. The attention to detail from the Celtic backcourt will make them excruciating to create space against. Sacrificing a rim protector in Time Lord was a lot to give up, but getting past Holiday and White at the point of attack makes Boston more versatile defensively. Holiday is not only an elite perimeter stopper, but is rangy and mobile enough to defend the basket. In Milwaukee's 2021 World Championship run, Drew defended 85 shots from 6 feet in. That was only 5 less shots defended on the interior than Giannis, and only 1 less than Middleton. For the Bucks to get that type of effort from their point guard was a luxury to say the ultimate least. Don't forget, the most important defensive play in Bucks franchise history from Drew was around the basket. Proving he's one of the greatest defenders of this generation, Holiday ranks third among active point guards with at least 500 games played in career defensive rating, only trailing future Hall of Famers CP3, Brody, and Wardell. Boston's also signing Wenyan Gabriel. Don't get it twisted though. Time Lord Robert Williams III was a massive piece to the Celtics puzzle. He was a lob threat, a goalie, and a rebounding menace. A year before this past one, Rob was the center for the all-defensive second team. That's why my first reaction was that they gave up a lot. When you take a further look into it though, losing a defensive player of the year in the trade for Porzingis gave Boston a need for another point guard, while acquiring Chris Stapps and also having Horford to back him up meant they had more than enough depth up front. And for those saying their bench is weak, Joe Mazzulla could easily start a lineup of D. White, Drew, Brown, Tatum, and Chris Stapps, make Horford the sixth man, bring in viable backups Pritchard and Hauser, and make underrated newcomers on the wing in Lamar Stevens and O'Shea Brissett his ninth and 10th men. Boston's bench isn't as weak as people are saying. The Celtics could afford to let go of sixth man of the year Malcolm Brogdon, given they already had a ton of depth at the point guard spot, with an addition to White and Pritchard, Delano Banton and J.D. Davison. They gave up a lot, but for Boston, it seems like one of the league's top GMs in Stevens has made them more stacked around Tatum and Brown by the month since he moved from head coach to the front office in 2021. Seems like we were just talking about Boston having three players averaging 23 plus points per game with their acquisition of all-star Chris Stapps Porzingis, and now a month later, Stevens has got the Celtics four 19 plus point per game scores with Holiday joining the fold. 
That's an underrated aspect of Drew's bag too, his bucket getting. While the scariest part of this acquisition from an Eastern Conference opponent's perspective is Holiday and White being impossible to score on, Drew being that elite secondary offensive manufacturer is another thing you have to worry about. Exemplifying that Holiday fits the Celtics' needs on the offensive end to a T, his assist-to-turnover ratio was identical to Marcus Smart's in 22-23. That said, Drew averaged over an assist more than Smart and was actually ranked top 12 among all players in dimes dropped per game just ahead of Dame. In the span of one offseason, Two all-NBA forwards in top-notch 1-2 punch Tatum and Brown have gotten one of the better playmakers in the league next to them with Holiday, in addition to a top-10 shot blocker last season in Chris Dapp's Porzingis, which in my opinion gives them the most loaded team in the Eastern Conference, not saying they're going to win it. Campaign was a great addition for the Bucks, a guy who gives Milwaukee that much more extra ball handling around Giannis. Between the Bucks and Celtics, though, it's tough to definitively proclaim that one team is favorited over the other, but it can be stated that these are far and away the two top dogs in the conference. Seeing a battle in the East Finals between Milwaukee and Boston is something any fan would want to see. Now that potential showdown becomes intriguing not only because of the duel between Tatum and Brown versus Giannis and Dame, but the homecoming of Drew, who's coming back for revenge on his old pals. Drew can slice up defenses and hit mid-range shots, as the man can carry you for stretches with that shot creation. That said, this playstyle had its moments of not meshing well with Giannis's similar slash first mid-range second repertoire. Conversely, Drew's style of play will be utilized to the highest degree in Boston, given Tatum and Brown's skill set is based around making shots from the perimeter. Driving kicks from Holiday to the Jays will make Boston a top-tier offense by itself. From there, having another guy who can space the floor and post up in Chris Stapps makes Beantown that much more dangerous. The biggest headline I think you can take away from this trade is Boston's starting five becoming that much more deadly. Everyone's making a big deal of the Celtics not having depth after dealing away Time Lord and Brogdon, but you could afford to give up those two crucial pieces by getting back a dynamic, multifaceted defender in Holiday. And taken in, you had just acquired a paint protector with a 7'6 wingspan who can do a bit of everything, including what Williams could do in KP. I think Boston's going to be okay. Not sure if Missoula's going to bring White off the bench, but a starting lineup of Derek, Drew, the Jays, and the Unicorn would be a force to be reckoned with. After this move, I'm not sure if anyone can stop Boston in 2024. The Nuggets are going to be a problem, though. Go watch yesterday's video on them. Let me know if you think Boston gave up too much down below. Subscribe for more NBA talk and peace. Mm -hmm.